Hello and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 32 of a 10 part video series. You know the drill, we're learning how to uh, automate using VRise Orchestrator. As you can see here, what we're going to be doing, uh, in the previous video I showed you how to import files into the resource repository. In this video, I'm going to talk about two different ways you can make use of those files that you've imported into the resource repository. So let's go to the lab environment and the very first way I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to cheat here because I know that um, my very first YouTube video years and years ago that I created, um, you can go online and find it. I'll put a link to it uh, either down in the description or up in one of those card things up above. But I, the very first video I created showed you how to import um, a graphics file into your orchestrator resource repository so that you could create custom icons for your workflows in orchestrator. Again, this folder here, if you're looking at the Vavork examples package down in custom workflow icons, you can see the end result. But if you want a step-by-step -step explanation of how that works, go view my very first ever video. But we're not going to do that. You can do that on your own and make your workflows look really cool because you can have your own icons. Uh, instead, what we're going to be doing now is going to this workflow you see down here on the bottom called run a script stored in a resource element and run that script um, through an SSH session to some machine out in our environment. So looking at this workflow here, uh, let's look at a schema first. Simple schema. In the schema, oh, I should change the, let me do this for posterity's sake. Uh, I'm going to say import script. There we go. I'll save that in the final version of this package. But my workflow, which apparently has some sort of error, we'll find out what that is here shortly, uh, is designed so that in this first schema element, it's going to import the script file from the that, that I had imported into the resource repository. And then it's going to take that script and shove it into some machine out there in the inner on, on my network that has SSH and it'll run that command. Now, in my particular example here, the the target of my SSH session is going to be one of my um, um, one of my ESXi servers. Um, I've turned SSH on on my ESXi server, so this should work fine to communicate with it. Uh, additionally, oh, silly me. I saw the red X's that were showing up before. I don't have an error in here. That's the red X to delete a schema element. That's not red X to indicate a, a, a syntactical error. Forgive me. So let's take a look at this import script schema element because this is where this is really what this video is about is to show you how you can import a resource so to understand how this works let me quickly hide the scripting from you for a moment i want you to see that this import script task has been set up through variable binding to bring into that scriptable task something uh, of type resource element um, a variable specifically in my workflow called my resource element. Now that one is an attribute, so let's go to the general tab. And in the general tab, we've got a whole bunch of other attributes. Um, the, only the first one really matters. The first one is the one and only attribute that we need to import the file. All of these other attributes that you see here are so that we can make the SSH connection, but they are irrelevant for the purposes of importing a file. So notice that this variable, the only one I want you to pay attention to is this attribute called my resource element is of type resource element. And what I did, let me clear its current value. What I did was simply click on not set. Up pops a little search window where I type what I'm looking for. I seem to recall, I call my script super amazing script. I select the script and now this attribute called my resource element can be used to programmatically bring in the contents of that file into my workflow. And that's what I'm doing over here in the first scriptable task. I've set up a binding so I have access to that attribute, but the script is where the real magic occurs. In the script, I type something like, 
uh, CMD, that's going to be a, that's just a, well, if you look over here, that's just a string variable that's being used to hold the contents of the file. Uh, I called it CMD because that's the name that the SSH workflow uh, is expecting. Um, I could have called this, instead of command, I could have called it, this variable holds the contents of the file that we imported. But to make it easier later on, I called it CMD. But that's just assigning a value. But this variable is going to hold the contents, it's going to hold a copy of the contents of the file that we're importing. But which one are we importing? Well, to import the file, we're going to say my resource element, that's that attribute I told you about a few moments ago, dot get content as mime type attachment, open close parentheses, dot content. Now, you're quite possibly asking yourself, how on earth did I know to type that? I understand the system.log stuff because we learned about that in part somewhere in part one through 10, but what the heck is this line here saying? Well, to understand it, you can use the API Explorer. By the way, API Explorer is the, the subject of the next video. Uh, you can use the API Explorer. Uh, there are different ways of using the API Explorer, but here's one way. I'm in the API Explorer, and if I go scrolling down through this alphabetized list of object types, if I go look for resource element, let me scroll a little bit till we find it. Let me not go too far. Here it is, resource element is an object type that has multiple properties. Hollow dots are properties, solid dots are methods, and this whole business here of git content, blah, 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 that is the method, where is he hiding? The method that I'm calling to bring in the contents of the file in question. So I simply say uh, the variable name, my resource element dot get content as mime type, excuse me, as mime attachment, open close parentheses dot content. And if I were to read the company description down below, it tells me that what this, this method does is it reads in whatever file uh, using whatever mime type you um, specified when you imported the file itself. So again, that's how I found the the code I needed to type. Um, admittedly, this is if this, this is your first time digging down into the API Explorer, that doesn't make complete sense. But I promise when you go through the next video or, or videos where I talk about the API Explorer, we're going to explore what properties are, what methods are, and so forth, so that this makes more sense. But if you didn't understand all that API Explorer business, just copy and paste this type of code, and that's how you can import a file into your workflow. You type this portion of the JavaScript to do the import. You say equals so that you can store those contents into some variable. And then provided you have bound that variable, in my case, the command variable outwardly, then in any subsequent schema element, like this workflow that's going to run an SSH command, uh, notice he's bringing in the variable that I just shoved the file into. Now this schema element here that runs an SSH command takes a whole bunch of other uh, attributes. If you don't want to listen to the rest of this because you already understand how to do SSH, the rest of this video is about SSH since it happens to be here. You can skip to the next video where we'll talk about API Explorer, but if you've never seen this before, uh, feel free to stick around. So the run SSH command workflow that I'm calling requires that I pass in the host name or IP address of the server that I'm connecting to, which I did over on the general tab. I have a variable called host name or IP, and I've set it to the host name of one of my ESXi servers. That could have been an ESXi server, provided I turn on SSH. Uh, that could be a Linux server. That could be a switch, a router. It could be anything that speaks SSH. Back to the schema. The next variable, the port number, uh, by default, uh, SSH sessions are run on port 22, but I hard-coded that into an attribute called port. So port is set to 22. I accidentally clicked the name. Ignore this pop-up window. I don't want to change its name. And I do the same thing for all these other variables. Username is the user that we're going to log in as in the SSH session. And password is the password that we're going to use. Uh, command is the command, well, we already talked about that. That's the command that's going to be executed. We set up the command 
variable in the previous schema element by importing the contents of the file that we put into the repository. And then all these other things like password authentication, um, that's a Boolean. If I say yes, that means instead of using something like a key exchange to do the SSH connection, we'll just use a nice simple username and password. So if I say yes, I have to supply the username and password. On the other hand, if I say no, um, you can, um, if you say no, you can, actually, I think there's more to this here. Let me scroll down a bit. I don't think we're seeing all of my variables. Um, not seeing some of the variables I, I thought I was gonna see, but ignoring that for right now, um, these three remaining variables that you see here are uh, the, the output portion of the workflow that calls the SSH session and runs the command. So that's what's going on here in the, the oh, interesting. Okay, now I know what's going on. Um, these are the three variables that I was expecting to see a few moments ago, but I didn't see them and I was kind of confused. Um, we'll talk about them in a moment. These three are just outputs of the running the SSH command. So I'll know what the result is. Uh, as the helpful description points out here, in Unix and Linux and environments like that, a zero as the return value or the result is good. Um, uh, negative numbers or positive numbers indicate a problem of some sort. The error text will return a string from the SSH session. If there was an error message that went out standard error, I will be able to see what that message is. And similarly, through the variable here called output text, I can see um, the standard output of the command we're running. Now, these last three variables, which are a requirement for calling the run SSH command workflow, are used if you're not doing password authentication. If you are doing password authentication, you need to pass in a username and password. If you're not doing password authentication, then you need to pass in uh, potentially these things, like the passphrase and the encoding, which I did not need to do in this particular case because I'm not doing that type of authentication. I'm doing password authentication, but I still have to bind these three uh, inputs to this workflow. They still have to be bound. But what I did was in that case, in the case of these three, I bound them to null which if you've never done that before, um, when you do a null binding, that's not done on the general tab by setting up some attribute and setting it to, to null. I suppose you could do that. But instead, what you do, the quick and easy way to set up a null binding is to simply uh, go to the in, in this case, they're in the in column, so I'll go to the in tab. And uh, these three variables would have started off initially saying not set. You simply click on not set, window pops up and you pick null. Instead of picking some variable you want to bind to, you just pick null. That's how you do null bindings. And even though the visual binding tab doesn't show you that these are null bindings, in fact, it kind of looks like an error, but these are actually uh, proper null bindings. So in visual binding, one of the few things you cannot do with visual binding is you cannot set up the null bindings and you can't really see the null bindings. But as we saw in the in tab, I indeed have those last three attributes, excuse me, those last three inputs set up as null bound, null bindings. Okay, that's probably more than you ever wanted to know about uh, SSH. So uh, as a reward for going through all that, let's actually run this workflow. So when we run the workflow in the import script portion of the workflow, it's going to read in the, uh-oh, got an error. Lucky you get to see me do some troubleshooting here in a moment. But I've read in the file and, actually, I think I know what's wrong here. I may have made a classic mistake that you may have caught. Nope, I'm bound to the right uh, schema element. Let's see, so go to this, I'm gonna go back to the schema. Um, so bonus session here, we're gonna do some troubleshooting. Whenever I'm troubleshooting a broken workflow, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the variables tab and see what the exception message is. So unable to execute command, blah, 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 connection refused. Oh, silly me, I think I forgot to set up uh, my ESXi server to allow SSH connections. So I'm gonna go do that real quickly. I'll go ahead and 
clip this portion out of the video or oh, what the heck, I'll leave it in so that you can see it. Um, I'm gonna speed up a little portion here um, though until I get to the point where I'm logged into my uh, ESXi server directly. Okay, if you're wondering what all that was, um, my lab environment's running on top of vCloud Director, and all I've done is go through vCloud Director to get to my host's uh, console screen. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to type function key 2, I'm going to log in as root. Uh, what I'm doing right now is going into the direct console user interface of my ESXi server so that I can go to troubleshooting options. And in the troubleshooting options section, I forgot to enable SSH on my uh, ESXi server, which is why my workflow failed a few moments ago. So I should log out here. Uh, I will do that later offline, but now that I've done that, I should be able to go to, back to my lab environment, and I'm gonna run the workflow again. When I run the workflow this time, again, the first schema element imports the file via the resources repository. So that happened here. And then it ran the SSH in session. This time it didn't blow up because I had my environment configured properly. Lucky you, you got to see some on the fly troubleshooting. And if we go to the logs file, um, you can actually see the contents of that file that I had put into the repository and including you can also see the output of running the workflow and so forth. But we're not here to learn about SSH. We can do that in another video. Instead, we were here to learn about the resources repository. And you now not only know how to go to the resources tab and to create your, or excuse me, import your resource files, but you also know how to, using the method I showed you earlier, how to make use of the files that you've imported into the resource repository. Now, the trickiest part of that whole um, um, process I took you through is figuring out what the method is that you need to call and I did that by going to the API Explorer but perhaps you've never used the API Explorer. Good news! Very next video, the subject is API Explorer. So I will see you over there. In fact, I insist you go watch the next video because the API Explorer is super, super important. So I'll see you in the next video.